A Lively Description of Our Justification by William Tyndale Mark, therefore, the way toward justifying or forgiveness of sin is the law. God causeth the law to be preached unto us, and writeth it in our hearts, and maketh us, by good reasons, feel that the law is good and ought to be kept, and that they which keep it not are worthy to be damned. And on the other side I feel that there is no power in me to keep the law, whereupon it would shortly follow that I should despair, if I were not shortly holpen. But God, who hath begun to cure me, and hath laid that corrosive unto my sores, goes forth in his cure, and setteth his son Jesus before me, and all his passion and death, and saith to me, This is my dear son, and he hath prayed for thee, and hath suffered all this for thee, and for his sake I will forgive thee all that thou hast done against this good law, and I will heal thy flesh, and teach thee to keep this law, if thou wilt learn, and I will bear with thee, and take all in good part that thou doest, till thou canst do better, and in the mean season, notwithstanding thy weakness, I will yet love thee no less than I do the angels in heaven, so thou wilt be diligent to learn. And I will assist thee, and keep and defend thee, and be thy shield, and care for thee. And the heart here begins to mollify and soften, and to receive health, and believes the mercy of God, and in believing is saved from the fear of everlasting death, and is made sure of everlasting life, and then, being overcome with this kindness, begins to love again, and to submit herself unto the laws of God, to learn them, and to walk in them. Note now the order. First God gives me light to see the goodness and righteousness of the law, and mine own sin and unrighteousness out of which knowledge springeth repentance. Now repentance teacheth me not that the law is good and I evil, but a light which the Spirit of God hath given me, out of which light repentance springeth. Then the same Spirit worketh in mine heart, trust, and confidence to believe the mercy of God and his truth, that he will do as he hath promised, which belief saveth me. And immediately out of that trust springeth love toward the law of God again and whatsoever a man worketh of any other love than this it pleases not god nor is that love godly now love does not receive this mercy but faith only out of which faith love springeth by which love i pour out again upon my neighbour that goodness which i have received of god by faith hereof ye see that i cannot be justified without repentance and yet repentance justifies me not and hereof ye see that I cannot have a faith to be justified and saved, except love spring thereof immediately, and yet love justifies me not before God. For my natural love to God again does not make me first see and feel the kindness of God in Christ, but faith through preaching. For we love not God first, to compel him to love again, but he loved us first, and gave his Son for us, that we might see love and love again, saith St. John in his first epistle, which love of God to usward we receive by Christ through faith, saith Paul. And this example have I set forth for them in diverse places, but their blind eyes have no power to see it. Covetousness hath so blinded them. And when we say faith only justifies us, that is to say, faith only receiveth the mercy wherewith God justifies us and forgives us, we mean not faith which has no repentance, and faith which has no love unto the laws of God again, and unto good works, as wicked hypocrites falsely belie us. For how then should we suffer, as we do, all misery to call the blind and ignorant unto repentance and good works, which now do but consent unto all evil, and study mischief all day long, for their preaching and their justifying by good works. Let Mr. Moore improve this with his sophistry and set forth his own doctrine, that we may see the reason of it and walk in light. Hereof ye see that faith it is that justifies us. The faith in Christ's blood of a repenting heart toward the law justifies us alone, and not all manner of faiths. Ye must understand, therefore, that ye may see to come out of Moore's blind maze that there are many faiths, and that all faiths are not one faith, though they are all called with one general name. There is an historical faith without feeling in the heart wherewith I may believe the whole history of the Bible, and yet not set mine heart earnestly thereto, taking it for the food of my soul, to learn to believe and trust God, to love Him, to dread Him and fear Him by the doctrine and examples thereof, but to seem learned and to know the history, to dispute and make merchandise, as we have examples enough. 
and the faith wherewith a man doeth miracles is another gift than the faith of a repenting heart to be saved through christ's blood and the one is no kin to the other though mr moore would have them so appear neither is the devil's faith and the pope's faith wherewith they believe that there is a god and that christ is and all the story of the bible and may yet stand with all wickedness and full consent to evil kin unto the faith of them that hate evil and repent of their misdeeds and acknowledge their sins and are fled with full hope and trust of mercy unto the blood of christ and when he saith if faith certify our hearts that we are in the favour of god and our sins forgiven and become good ere we do good works as the tree must be first good ere it bring forth good fruit by christ's doctrine then we make good works but a shadow wherewith a man is never the better nay sir we make good works fruits whereby our neighbour is the better and whereby god is honoured and our flesh tamed and we make of them sure tokens whereby we know that our faith is no feigned imagination and dead opinion made with captivating our understandings after the pope's traditions but a lively thing wrought by the holy ghost and when he disputes that if they that have faith have love unto the law and purpose to fulfil it then faith alone justifies not how will he prove that argument he juggles with this word alone and would make the people believe that we said how a bare faith that is without all other company of repentance love and other virtues yea and without god's spirit too did justify us so that we should not care to do good but the scripture so takes not alone nor do we so mean as mr moore knows well enough when a horse bears a saddle and a man is therein we may well say that the horse only and alone bears the saddle and is not helped of the man in bearing thereof but he would make men understand that we meant the horse bear the saddle empty and no man therein let him mark this to see his ignorance which would that it were not coupled with malice every man that hath wit hath a will too and then by mr moore's argument wit only gives not the light of understanding now the conclusion is false and the contrary true for the wit without help of the will gives the light of the understanding neither does the will work at all until the wit have determined this or that to be good or bad now what is faith save a spiritual light of understanding and an inward knowledge or feeling of mercy out of which knowledge love doth spring but love brought me not that knowledge for i knew it ere i loved so that love in the process of nature to dispute from the cause to the effect helps not at all to the feeling that god is merciful to me no more than the loving heart and kind behaviour of an obedient wife to her husband makes her see his love and kindness to her for many such have unkind husbands but by his kind deeds to her does she see his love even so my love and deeds make me not see god's love to me in the process of nature but his kind deeds to me in that he gave his son for me make me see his love and to love again our love and good works make not god first love us and change him from hate to love as the turk jew and vain papists mean but his love and deeds make us love and change us from hate to love for he loved us when we were evil and his enemies as paul testifies in diverse places and he chose us to make us good and to show us love and to draw us to him that we should love again the father loves his child when it has no power to do good and when it must be suffered to run after its own lusts without law and he never loses it better than then to make it better and to show it love and to love again and he never loves it better than then to make it better and to show it love to love again if ye could see what is written in the first epistle of john though all the other scripture were laid aside ye should see all this and you must understand that we sometimes dispute forward from the cause to the effect and must beware that we are not therewith beguiled we say summer is come and therefore all is green and dispute forward for summer is the cause of the greenness we say the trees are green and therefore summer is come and dispute backward from the effect to the cause for the green trees make not summer but make summer known so we dispute backward the man doth good deeds and profitable unto his neighbour he therefore must love god he loves god he must therefore have a true faith and see mercy and yet my works make not my love nor my love my faith nor my faith god's mercy but contrary god's mercy makes my faith and my love my works 
and if the pope could see mercy and work of love to his neighbour and not sell his works to god for heaven after mr moore's doctrine we needed not so to settle disputing of faith and when mr moore alleges paul to the corinthians to prove that faith may be without love he proves nothing but juggles only he saith it is evident by the words of paul that a man may have a faith to do miracles without love and may give all his goods in arms without love and his body to burn for the name of christ and all without charity well i will not stick with him he may so do without charity and without faith thereto then a man may have faith without faith yea verily because there are many differences of faith as i have said and not all faiths are one faith we read in the works of cyprian that there were martyrs who suffered martyrdom for the name of christ all the year long and were tormented and healed again and then brought forth afresh which martyrs believed as ye do that the pain of their martyrdom should be a deserving and merit enough not only to deserve heaven for themselves but to make satisfaction for the sins of other men thereto and gave pardons of their merits after the example of the pope's doctrine and forgave the sins of other men who had openly denied christ and wrote unto cyprian that he should receive those men that had denied christ into the congregation again at the satisfaction of their merits for which pride cyprian wrote to them and called them the devil's martyrs and not god's those martyrs had a faith without faith for had they believed that all mercy is given for christ's bloodshedding they would have sent other men thither and would have suffered their own martyrdom for the love of their neighbours only to serve them and to testify the truth of god in our saviour jesus unto the world to save at the least some that is the elect for whose sake paul suffered all things and not to win heaven if i work for a worldly purpose i get no reward in heaven even so if i work for heaven or a higher place in heaven i get there no reward but i must do my work for the love of my neighbour because he is my brother and the price of christ's blood and because christ hath deserved it and desires it of me and then my reward is great in heaven and all they which believe that their sins be forgiven them and they received as the scripture testifies unto the inheritance of heaven for christ's merits the same love christ and their brethren for his sake and do all things for their sakes only not once thinking of heaven when they work but of their brethren's need when they suffer themselves above might then they comfort their soul with the remembrance of heaven that this wretchedness shall have an end and we shall have a thousandfold pleasures and rewards in heaven not for the merits of our deservings but given us freely for christ's and he that hath love hath the right faith and he that hath that faith hath the right love for i cannot love my neighbour for christ's sake except i first believe that i have received such mercy of christ nor can i believe that i have received such mercy of christ but i must love my neighbour for his sake seeing that he so urgently desires me and when he alleges st james it is answered him in the mammon and augustine answers him and st james expounds himself for he saith in the first chapter god which begat us of his own will with the word of truth which word of truth is the promises of mercy and forgiveness in our saviour jesus by which he begat us gave us life and made us a new creature through a fast faith and james goes on and rebukes the opinion and false faith of them that think it enough to be saved by if they believe that there is but one god and that christ was born of a virgin and a thousand things which a man may believe and yet not believe in christ to be saved from sin through him and that james speaks of another faith than at the beginning appears by his example the devils have faith saith he yea but the devils have no faith that can repent of evil or to believe in christ to be saved through him or that can love god and work his will of love now paul speaks of a faith that is in christ's blood to be saved thereby which works immediately through the love of the benefit received and james at the beginning speaks of a faith that abides trial saying the trying of your faith worketh or causeth patience but the faith of the devils will abide no trying for they will not work god's will because they love him not and in like manner is it of the faith of them that repent not or that think themselves without sin for except a man feel out of what danger christ hath delivered him he cannot love the work and therefore james saith right that no such faith that will not work can justify a man and when paul saith faith only justifieth and james saith that a man is justified by works and not by faith only there is a great difference between paul's only and james's only 
for paul's only is to be understood that faith justifies in the heart and before god without help of works yea and ere i can work for i must receive life through faith to work with ere i can work but james's only is thus to be understood that faith does not so justify that nothing justifies save faith for deeds do justify also but faith justifies in the heart and before god and the deeds before the world only and make the other seen as ye may perceive by the scripture for paul saith romans four if abraham have works he hath whereof to rejoice but not before god for if abraham had received those promises of deserving then had it been abraham's praise and not god's as thou mayest see in the text neither had god showed abraham mercy and grace but had only given him his duty and deserving but in that abraham received all the mercy that was showed him freely through faith out of the deservings of the seed that was promised him as thou mayest see by genesis and by the gospel of john where christ testifies that abraham saw his day and rejoiced and of that joy doubtless he wrought it is god's praise and the glory of his mercy and the same mayest thou see by james when he saith abraham offered his son and so was the scripture fulfilled that abraham believed and it was reckoned to him for righteousness and he was thereby made god's friend how was it fulfilled before god nay it was fulfilled before god many years before and he was god's friend many years before even from the first appointment that was made between god and him abraham received promises of all mercy and believed and trusted god and went and wrought out of that faith but it was fulfilled before us who cannot see the heart as james saith i will show thee my faith out of my works and as the angel said to abraham now i know that thou dreadest god not but that he knew it before but for us spake he that who can see nothing in abraham more than in other men save by his works and what works meant james verily the works of mercy as if a brother or sister lack raiment or sustenance and ye be not moved to compassion nor feel their diseases what faith have ye then no faith be sure that feeleth the mercy that is in christ for they that feel that are merciful again and thankful but look on the works of our spirituality which will not only be justified with works before the world but also before god they have had all christendom to rule this eight hundred years and as they only are anointed in the head so have they been only king and emperor and have had all power in their hands and have been the doers only and the leaders of those shadows that have had the name of princes and have led them whither they would and have breathed into their brains what they listed and they have wrought the world out of peace and unity and every man out of his welfare and are become alone well at ease only free only at liberty only have all things and do naught therefore only lay on other men's backs and bear naught themselves and the good works of them that wrought out of faith and gave their goods and lands to find the poor they devour them also alone and what works preach they only those that are to them profitable and whereby they reign in men's consciences as god to offer to give to be prayed for and to be delivered out of purgatory and to redeem your sins of them and to worship ceremonies and be shriven and so forth and when mr moore is come to himself and saith the first faith and the first justifying is given us without our deserving god be thanked and i would fain that he would describe me what he means by the second justifying i know no more to do than that when i have received all mercy and all forgiveness of christ freely to go and pour out the same upon my neighbour mr moore saith david lost not his faith when he committed adultery i answer no and therefore he could not continue in sin but repented as soon as his fault was told him but was he not reconciled by faith only and not by deeds said he not have mercy on me lord for thy great mercy and for the multitude of thy mercies put away my sin and again make me hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice that is let me hear thy voice that my sin is forgiven and that i am safe and will rejoice and afterwards he acknowledges that god delighteth not in sacrifices for sin but that a troubled spirit and a broken heart is that which god requireth and when the peace was made he prays boldly and familiarly to god that he would be good to zion and jerusalem and saith that then last of all when god hath forgiven us of mercy and hath done us good for our evil we shall offer sacrifice of thanks to him again so that our deeds are but thanksgiving 
when we have sinned we go with a repenting heart unto christ's blood and there wash it off through faith and our deeds are but thanksgiving to god to help our neighbours at their need for which our neighbours and each of them owe us as much again at our need so that the testament or forgiveness of sins is built upon faith in christ's blood and not on works mr moore will run to the pope for forgiveness by what merits does the pope forgive by christ's and christ hath promised all his merits to them that repent and believe he has not given them unto the pope to sell and in your absolutions ye oft absolve without enjoining of penance he must have a purpose to do good works will ye say that condition is set before him to do out of the mercy that he hath received and not to receive mercy out of them but the papists cannot repent out of the heart and therefore cannot feel the mercy that faith brings and therefore cannot be merciful to their neighbours to do their works for their sakes but they feign a sorrow for their sin in which they ever continue and so mourn for them in the morning that they laugh in them ere midday again and then they imagine to themselves popish deeds to make satisfaction to god and make an idol of him and finally that good works as to give alms and such like justify not of themselves is manifest for as the good who are taught of god do them well and of very love to god and christ and of their neighbours for christ's sake even so the evil do them of vainglory and of false faith wickedly as we have examples in the pharisees so that a man must be good ere he can do good and so is it of the purpose to do them one's purpose is good and another's evil so that we must be good ere a good purpose can come now then to love the law of god and to consent thereto and to have it written in thine heart and to profess it that thou art ready of thine own accord to do it and without compulsion is to be righteous that i grant and that love may be called righteous before god passive and the life and quickness of the soul passive and so far as a man loves the law of god so far he is righteous and so much as he lacketh of love toward his neighbour after the example of christ so much he lacketh of righteousness and that which makes a man love the law of god makes a man righteous and justifies him effectively and actually and makes him alive as a workman and cause efficient now what is it that makes a man to love verily not the deeds for they follow and spring of love if they be good neither the preaching of the law for that quickens not the heart galatians three but causes wrath romans six and utters sin only romans three and therefore paul saith that righteousness springs not out of the deeds of the law into the heart as the jews and the pope mean but contrary the deeds of the law spring out of the righteousness of the heart if they be good as when a father pronounces the law that the child shall go to school it saith nay for that killeth his heart and all his lusts, so that he has no power to love it. But what makes his heart alive to love it? Verily, fair promises of love and kindness, that it shall have a gentle schoolmaster, and shall play enough, and shall have many gay things, and so forth. Even so the preaching of faith works love in our souls, and makes them alive, and draws our hearts to God. The mercy that we have in Christ makes us love only, and only bringeth the spirit of life into our souls." and therefore saith paul we are justified by faith and by grace without deeds that is ere the deeds come for faith only brings the spirit of life and delivers our souls from fear of damnation which is in the law and ever maketh peace between god and us as oft as there is any variance between us and finally when the peace is made between god and us and all is forgiven through faith in christ's blood and we begin to love the law we were never the nearer except faith went with us to supply the lack of full love in that we have promises that the little we have is taken as of worth and accepted till more come and again when our frailty has overthrown us fear of damnation has invaded our consciences we were utterly lost if faith were not by to help us up again in that we are promised that whensoever we repent of evil and come to the right way again it shall be forgiven for christ's sake for when we are fallen there is no testament made in works to come that they shall save us and therefore the works of repentance or of the sacraments can never quiet our consciences and deliver us from fear of damnation and last of all in temptation tribulation and adversities we should perish daily except faith went with us to deliver us in that we have promises that god will assist us clothe us feed us and fight for us and rid us out of the hands of our enemies 
and thus the righteous lives ever by faith even from faith to faith that is as soon as he is delivered out of one temptation another is set before him to fight against and to overcome through faith the scripture saith blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven and his sins hid and unto whom the lord reckons not unrighteousness so that the only righteousness of him that can but sin and hath nought of himself to make amends is the forgiveness of sin which faith only brings and as far as we be unrighteous faith only justifies us actively and nothing else on our part and as far as we have sinned be in sin or do sin or shall sin so far must faith in christ's blood justify us only and nothing else to love is to be righteous so far as thou lovest but not to make righteous nor to make peace to believe in christ's blood with a repenting heart is to make righteous and the only making of peace and satisfaction toward god and thus because terms be dark to them that be not expert and exercised we always set our meaning with clear examples reporting ourselves unto the hearts and consciences of all men this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org